Hi everyone, I'm Pajama Liz, and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Kin Stitch for Floss Tube episode 68. <music> Welcome back. Pajama Liz, checking in. <laughs> it is Saturday, January 1st, and welcome to another Floss Tube episode. Um, I decided to go ahead and film tonight because, you know, it's been a, a lazy, slow day, and if I film tonight, then tomorrow can be even lazier and slower. <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like sitting down and filming my Floss Tube episode tonight. So, it's the Pajama Liz version. I just want to give a big thank you to all of you who have been keeping up with me this month and watching all of the Crazy Stitchmas videos I've been putting up, even just cookie decorating with uh, Rob. Thank you. Um, it has been such a fun month of videos and I have absolutely loved doing them. And while I am excited to take a little break from maniacally editing videos <laughs> in January, um, it has been so much fun to do. So uh, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to say it like I've done it because I'll do it like later before this video goes up. Um, but I have created playlists on my channel so that you can find all of, well, like all the Stitchmas videos if you just want to watch those. But I'm also going to group together all my tutorials because not only did I do a bunch of tutorial, tutorials during Stitchmas, I've also done um, several um, throughout the year. So I thought I would make a playlist of just all the different tutorials that I've done or just like walkthroughs or finish with me's, stuff like that. Um, Somebody commented, I should have saved your comment, but thank you for reminding me that um, is a way to help organize my channel and uh, basically what you would do to find those playlists. I'll link them down below, but you would just go into my channel onto my videos and there would be an option that says playlists and then there you would see all the playlists I've created and you can just click in from there. So yeah, I'm going to do that before this video goes live. <laughs> And if I haven't, somebody just remind me in the comments. I hope everybody had a good Christmas and New Year's and, um, you know, did anybody get wild and crazy last night? <laughs> we did not. We went to see some of Rob's family last night and we got home around 11 and just sat on the couch and um, cheers at midnight and went to bed. <laughs> So, well, after the fireworks died down, there were a lot of fireworks in our area last night for about a half hour. Um, I didn't even know they were legal right now. I thought, I don't know, but it must have been raining enough recently to have, to not have a burn ban. I don't know. I never know if it's legal or not. And honestly, maybe they're illegal and people are just setting them off and then running inside <laughs> in order to not get caught. I have no clue. But um, yes, the fireworks are out and about. Thankfully, we don't have dogs, so we don't have to deal with um, the poor, scared dogs like my sisters have to deal with. Uh, <laughs> and then today was a good day. I got to go to the hospital. Well, it's not the hospital. It's the rehab center attached to a hospital um, where my mom is staying right now and have lunch with her. They're only letting one person in at a time. So um, we've all had to take turns and be a little more strategic about when we go. So we all get to spend some time with mama and she is doing so good. She's killing her, all of her physical therapy, like hitting all the goals. So she should be home on Tuesday. I'm so excited. And um, she's also just in a much better mood because she feels so much better now, right? So that was a lot of fun to just go hang out and talk wedding stuff and quilt plans and cross stitching stuff. And she was like, I have so many videos of yours to watch when I get home because she just hasn't felt like watching anything. So hopefully uh, <laughs> all my Stitchmas videos can help keep her company uh, while we all go back to work it's just as soon as she gets home. I feel bad. I like wish I had another two weeks off of work to just go like hang out with her um, when she gets home, but work. <laughs> but I mean, she'll have my dad there with her all day, every day. So it's not like she needs me. I just, you know, I, I just want, I'm just looking for an excuse to take two more weeks off work really is what it's about right now. 
Okay, I feel like I have a lot to share with you guys, so I better get into it before I ramble too much more. Um, I'm going to start with the only FFO of the week, which is probably the quickest FFO that has ever been done, in my house anyways. Um, and that is this little ornament, this little mill hill. This is, let's see, I think it's called Holiday Wishes. I thought I put the chart up here to show you. Oh, goodness. Uh, I don't know where it is. Um, but this is a Mill Hill kit. It's a new one from this year, one of their new Christmas ornaments. And uh, it says Happy Holidays, but I'm pretty sure the chart itself is called Holiday Wishes. And uh, I stitched it on the perforated paper with all of the kit threads and beads. And then I finished it with just a piece of um, the adhesive backed velvet that so many people recommended. I had posted as one of my very first Stitchmas videos, a perforated paper ornament um, kind of finishing video, which is how I do it, with, which is with the wool felt. And a lot of people had mentioned this adhesive backed velvet and also said that Michelle from Mama Loves You GB had recommended it as well. And so I bought, um, this is how mine came. It came in like pieces of almost like printer paper sized sheets. And so I think I got like 10 or 12 sheets, which is too much, but it was like the smallest amount I could buy. And um, I basically just, you know, set my ornament and backer down and then cut it all out as one, as one thing. And the only uh, cons I feel like are that the adhesive on the velvet isn't the stickiest. I mean, it's sticky, but it's not, it doesn't feel like absolutely 100% secure. It feels like I could peel this up if I wanted to. And um, the other part was just making sure to get it all trimmed and not cut off my hanger uh, in the process because you need the hanger sandwiched while you, you know, put the ornament and the backing together, but then you need to cut it out. So you have to like, you know, pull the hanger out of the way and cut the front and then pull the hanger this way to cut the back and just make sure you don't like, you know, trim your hanger off. And then um, I was posting about this yesterday on my Instagram stories and Michelle, a mama loves you GB, DM me and was telling me that um, she also finds this peels up a little bit. And so she uses double sided adhesive in a few spots on the back just to make sure it's like super secure. So I definitely think on my next one, I might try that. Um, but I also really do like the wool felt. It's a little bit thicker and um, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I, I definitely love how quick this was for sure. So I'm really happy with how this little one turned out. And it's been on the tree for the past couple days. <laughs> I got it done after Christmas, but it's fine. It'll just get packed away with the ornaments and get put on the tree next year. Okay, I also had a couple of finishes, and the first one is this Mary and Minty Sal by Brenda Gervais. Um, I finished this, I don't know, right before Christmas, and I just think it turned out so cute. The only part I omitted or changed is that it called for this red and white border to be up top, and I just felt, now that I'm saying all this, did I finish this before my last video? Okay, <laughs> you're probably watching this being like, you told us. I'm just gonna keep going because I'm filming on my phone so I can't get on my phone to check my last video. It's fine. This is the Mary and Minty piece. I either finished it right before my last video or right after. <laughs> and I omitted the red and white stripe border from the top. And I have some peppermint themed Christmas fabric that I really want to use to make this into a little pillow. And then Helen D, um, East Coast Crafter, uh, she gave me these little snowflake buttons. I have a whole little like, um, like probably like 10 to 20 of these that she sent along as part of um, an exchange gift. And so I want to find a way to incorporate the little snowflakes with this piece and then I have some peppermint Christmas fabric um, and to make a little pillow. I sat down to try to do it yesterday and then I just kind of ran out of time because I don't know. <laughs> but um, that's, I still want to finish this one like now even though I'm kind of like done with Christmas stuff and it will just get immediately put up but that's okay. Um, Let's see, what else did I finish? Oh yeah, I guess I should tell you unless I already told you last week that this was on a piece of 36 count 
lakeside something with most of the called for colors. The next finish, I know I finished <laughs> after my last video. And that one is, oh, did I not grab the chart? It's my Christmas Tiny Town by Heart and Hand. And here is my finish. I love this one so much. I think it turned out so cute. Um, I put all of the little buttons on it, did the back stitching, and I think I finished it up like right after midnight on Christmas Eve. So got a little bit of a Christmas Eve night finish and yeah, absolutely love this. The pattern shows it finished as a drum and also as a flat piece. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do mine as a flat piece, either like a flat fold kind of stand up thing or um, just like a long skinny frame if I find one I like, but um, since I don't have like a clear cut idea and I don't have like a frame or anything ready to go for this one, I'm just gonna put this in my um, bin of finishes that need to be FFO'd and I'll get this one out when it gets closer um, to next year and figure out how I wanna finish that one. So, oh yeah, I stitched this one on 36 count vintage country mocha. Um, the called for is a 32 count vintage country mocha, but I had some 36 that I wanted to use and I used one strand of floss um, over two linen threads. A lot of people since my whip parade have asked me how many strands of thread that I stitch with on 36 count, and I always stitch with one strand on 36 count. Um, that's just my preferred way to stitch. And I used all the called for colors. Um, oh, also the one strand on 36. So, um, you know, there's a lot, like some people prefer two strands on 36 for the fuller coverage look. Some people prefer one strand because, well, some people just like stitching with one strand like me and also don't mind the thinner coverage. And I would just say, if you're like kind of hemming and hawing about how many strands to use on a piece, just take one strand and stitch a five by five square of stitches and then take two strands and stitch a five by five square of stitches and like use like a dark thread color, one that sometimes can be a little sparse and um, and just see what you like and be like, oh, can I live with one strand coverage? Do I like that look or do I feel like I need two strands? That would be my recommendation. Um, but I know for me, 36 count, I'm always using one strand because that's just what I like. So that is my Christmas tiny town finish. Okay, and then on Christmas day, I had a new start. And I started the Peace on Earth Sampler by Cottage Garden Samplings. I just think it's gorgeous. And I just showed this a couple days ago in my whip parade, so you already saw it, but I'm gonna show it to you again, even though it hasn't changed. <laughs> and here it is. I'm stitching mine on 36 count Picture This Plus Wren with all of the called for over dyed flosses. So yeah, love this one. I was inspired to stitch this one um, or influenced to stitch this one by Lisa Smith, Kendra Stitcher. I think she has influenced a lot of us to start this one. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just gorgeous. So I got a little start on that one and I definitely want to work on this some more before I kind of fully am done with Christmassy winter type stuff. So I'm gonna keep this one on the top of the pile for right now. <laughs> oh, here was my little Mill Hill. <laughs> what was it called? Holiday Wishes. Winter Holiday Collection, Holiday Wishes. So if anyone's looking for this one. And then besides my new start, the only other thing I've been working on this week has been Winter Rose Manor. And guys, guess what? I finished the house. Do I need party horns? <laughs> that was for you, Jenny. <laughs> okay. Anyways, guys, I finished the house. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this one's so pretty. I love it. Um, the only setback I have is, um, or had, is that on the bottom the uh the little border I was like all the way over here and realized that I got off a stitch and it was looking awkward and so I had to pull it out so I mean that border is small so it's not that big a deal but I was annoyed <laughs> um yeah 
I'm so excited. That big pink house is done. All the windows are done. I think I just have to fill in the center of the flowers that are on the house and put in the doorknob. But other than that, I am moving on to that white snow and the trees and then that big fence. <laughs> this whole bottom of the chart is like so much more full coverage on the top. So I'm going to get there. Um, I am stitching mine on 40 count Brenda's Brew by r and which honestly is one of my like very favorite colors. Um, it's very, very similar to Winter's Brew. It's just a little bit browner, a little bit darker. Um, like maybe a little like pinkier browner rather than gray brown. Um, it's just a little bit darker than Winter's Brew, which is another one of my favorite colors. So yeah, I love this. And I just love how the white pops off. I'm using all the uh, called for colors, except for my white, which is Toasted Marshmallow. And I think it looks great. So this is definitely kind of what I'm calling my focus piece for January. Um, I'll talk about that in plans in just a minute, but I don't want to put this one away until it's done. Like that's not to say I'm not going to stitch on anything else this month. I just, I want to get this one finished in January. I mean, also I can't let it linger. I put the tea in already, so it's got to be done before I get married. <laughs> Um, so last year, one of the more fun segments, or did I do a whole segment, or did I do a whole video? I can't remember. Was um, gifts I handmade for Christmas. Last year, I had my sister Lynn for our like Secret Santa family present exchange, and I made her pretty much everything in her gift. Um, this year, I had Allison who gave me a pretty specific list, and so I only ended up hand making one item for her, which was the candy cane project bag that I did a video on. I said I was making it as a gift. I didn't say it was, Al it was for Allison just in case she watched it. She didn't, but we're safe, but now she's opened it, so she knows it's for her. And then the nutcracker bag that I didn't have a chance to make, I have now ended up making. <laughs> and um, this is what is um, housing my piece on earth sampler. So um, that's a little bit of sewing that I got done this past week was making my um, nutcracker bag in the same style that I made for Allison's. So just use the big giant rick rack. The only part that I messed up on, it's not even a mess up, it's just I meant to switch it, was I meant for the wider part to be above the zipper than below it. Um, but it, the bag still works perfectly fine. I just I just meant to switch these two pieces. Um, but otherwise, I think it's super cute. And I put one of the big red by Annie zippers in and I lined it with the same Holly. I mean, you guys saw me cut this bag out in that video. So um, I just finally sewed it together. So that was another little project that I got up to this week. Still no quilting, mostly because um, this, <laughs> this sewing room has been a hot mess. Uh, I, it took me a couple of days to prep for the whip parade and get everything ironed, stacked, organized, charts, like just everything ready. And then for those couple of days, like I couldn't do anything in here because everything was everywhere. And then uh, finally yesterday, I tidied everything up. I put all of the whips back in their bags and made a silly little sped up video of it that I'll put here. So yeah, now I can get all those project bags put on their shelf. I can get back to organizing my craft room. And I had talked about maybe doing a quilt whip parade in my cross stitch um, whip parade video. And so many people uh, were like, yes, please. So yes, as soon as this craft room is back organized, everything's put back away and I've decluttered 
some stuff. Then I'm going to get all the quilt whips out and I'll do a little quilt rip, quilt whip parade and hopefully finally get back to working on my Christmas quilt that I was like halfway through with and maybe I'll start Allison's 30th birthday quilt since she just turned 31. <laughs> um, every year, not every year, I only have three sisters. Every time one of my sisters turns 30, um, I give them the same gift, which is that they can pick whatever quilt they want me to make for them um, within reason, not like a king size hand pieced nonsense. They know better than that. Um, <laughs> so uh, Lynn and Sarah have already have their 30th birthday quilts and Allison, the baby, like, well, I have a brother, Joe, who's a lot younger, but Allison um, turned 30 last year. She just turned 31. Still have not started her quilt, but I don't think Lynn got hers until she was 33 and Sarah might have been 32. I don't remember. <laughs> but I need to get started on Allison's quilt because she picked one. I have all the stuff. I need to just start it. It's just kind of a complicated one. Um, so I just haven't, you know, gotten started on it because it's going to be like a whole room takeover once I start delving into that bad boy. Um, but maybe I'll maybe I'll include that in my in progress video just to show you. I've showed it before. It's it's a kit, um, and I know I've gone through like my quilt kits and things. But yeah. Anyways, um, I think that's a sewing update. Let's see what else do I have. Plans. Okay, plans. So I I have a lot of whips, <laughs> as I told you guys in the whip parade. I have a lot of big samplers that I want to come back to, that I have just been pushing aside because I have been wanting like quick, easy, like quick, like what do you call it? instant gratification type projects, right? And I really want to see what happens if I'm a monogamous stitcher for a while. I don't know how well I'll be able to stick to that. Um, especially because like I like making these videos and I don't want to come sit down with you guys every week and have one project to show you and make a five minute video and be done. Although maybe you don't care. Maybe that's fine. So... <laughs> you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, so I think like my plan, I'm not going to like institute no new starts or you have to like a, a rotation where I have to work on something, but I'm going to like set goals like for each month. And so, uh, my January goal is, oh wait, not this one. <laughs> That's my piece on earth is my winter rose manor. Um, so winter rose manor is my January goal. And that is going to be like my January focus piece. So, you know, um, if I get it done in the next week, which I'm going to be honest, I feel like if I only stitch on this for another week or two or week and a half, it'll be done. So maybe next week's video is going to be boring. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, but this is definitely my first goal. And then, oh, actually, no, I, I have a project I'm about to start. So there'll be other stuff to show you next week. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but and then anyway, so then every month I want to just have like kind of a focus sampler where if that's all I want to work on that month, great. If there's other stuff I want to work on too, cool. But like just put most of my energy into like one of my big projects. Um, that's kind of the plan. And we'll see how well it goes. If if it's like if I'm getting frustrated and bored and like whatever, I'm going to abandon it because I just want to be happy. But like I kind of want to try and like um, and see what happens. So for January, it's this guy. For February, it is very, or maybe not even February, maybe even mid-January, if and when I finish this, um, I'll just grab another one. But I think land that I love um, from Teresa Kogut is going to be very quickly up in the rotation because that is just one that every time I take it out of the bag and look at it, I'm like, why am I not stitching on this? <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be up on the list. Um, I was just looking at some comments on my whip parade right before I sat down to film this. And I saw that Jen from Two Tall Stitchers um, here on uh, Floss Tube, uh, she commented that she had a couple in mind that she wanted to see me focus on. So I'm kind of interested to know what those are. So Jen, you got to tell me what you want me to focus on. I want to know. Um, but I do know that in March, when the Steel City Stitchers have their March Madness, um, where like I let you guys vote on what I work on, that was a lot of fun. So I definitely want to do that again in March um, and kind of like let everyone have a say on what I work on because that was kind of fun to do. So yeah, those are like my loose plans. I don't have, like Whip Go sounds so fun, but like 
it seems a little too structured for me. <laughs> I'm kind of all over the place. Um, so I don't have like Whipgo and I loved watching um, Pam and Kia do their New Year's 12 by 12 where they started 12 new projects. That looks super fun. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to do loose goals for the month. That's going to be kind of what I start with. I also want to do a lot more sewing and quilting this year. I think I said that last year and I started out so strong and then I fell apart at the end of the year. So I'm going to start strong again and keep going strong and then finish strong. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. I think those are my plans. Uh, and I only had one little bit of haul. I just, I don't know. I haven't bought anything this last month either, either which is okay with me. Um, I'm sure once we start getting closer to uh, expo or market, I don't, is market happening again this year? Or is it just expo? I don't know. Um, when diner, designers start releasing new stuff, <laughs> I know I'll be buying. But for now, I just have my club order, which is the um, Fine Floss Club from Fat Quarter Shop that I get monthly. And so it's NPI Silk Floss. And I got all of these um, lovely red shades, which is awesome and will add to my collection. I think I've been in this for almost a year now. And I absolutely love having a stash of NPI silks. It's really fun. <laughs> Um, other than haul, I got some lovely Christmas cards in the mail. So one from my friend Danica in Ohio, no, Minnesota. You're in Minnesota, Danica, because we talked about, what do we talk about, Country Sampler? No. Okay, I left her card, like the envelope with her return address in the kitchen, but I'm almost positive it's Minnesota, because weren't we talking about Country Sampler? Although I know that's in Wisconsin, but isn't Wisconsin close to Minnesota, right? I'm really bad at Midwest geography. <laughs> Texas is like the size of the Midwest. So like, I don't know what goes on in the Midwest. Um, but thank you, Danica. Your Christmas card is beautiful. So, in your girl, so are your girls. So Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Also got a really pretty card from Dottie Stitching Scotty here on YouTube. Beautiful, beautiful card. And I got um, just a really, really lovely note from Mariana. Um, and she uh, she sent a note um, with just really nice things to say, wishing my mom well on her recovery. And thank you, Mariana, so much for thinking of her. She's doing so much better. I am so thankful. She will be sitting right here so very soon. <laughs> That's a threat, mom. <laughs> I hope she's watching this and laughing. Um, <laughs> So anyways, thank you so much for thinking of her and thinking of me and sending this lovely card is so appreciated. Uh, I think next I want to talk about giveaways because I did a couple giveaways in my last video and nobody claimed them and they're great charts. So um, I can't remember now the names. Let me look at that and then I'll remind you once I remind myself. Okay, I'm totally forgetting who won which. I'll go watch my older my my last week video and remember. But Christmas cheer was won by. <laughs> Please email me if I don't hear from you this week. I'll just redraw new names from the comment section uh, from this video and then um, pick a new name next week. But it's either Carolyn or Kelly. One of you won this one, and then the other one. One Dear Santa. This is who won Dear Santa. I'm putting the text in right here, I'm sure. Or is it over here? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, Dear Santa, this is the winner. Please email me. If um, I don't hear from you next week, I'll just draw new winners. So, okay, there's that. And then last week, um, I wanted to give everyone a Christmas gift. Uh, I want to give it to everyone. I'm giving it to one person. A $100 gift card to Etsy. So... Let me get on the random comment picker and get a winner and announce that one. And I really hope I hear from that person. Um, I hope somebody wants their gift card. <laughs> okay, so there were 623 unique commenters who commented with Etsy. And let's pick a winner. Peggy Cans. Oh, Peggy, thank you for your comment. Um, my email address is in the description box below. Send me an email and I'll send you over your Etsy gift card. Thank you. Okay, I think that's the end of the video. Um, yeah, my loosey-goosey plans, all my stitching, 
And what else did I want to talk about? Let me check my notes first because there's always something. Oh, I did have a question. So I try to go through my comments and answer questions as I see them. Um, it has been super hard to keep up with any comments this month because I've been posting way too many videos. So um, if you have a question that you still need an answer to and you don't know, one, email it to me. Um, that's a quicker way because <laughs> it's easier to see those emails than in comments. Um, or two, just ask it again. I have no problem if you just, you know, use the same comment and hopefully I'll see it like because it'll be up at the top. Um, but yes, uh, what was I talking about? Questions. I get a lot of questions and stuff like the 36 count one strand that a lot of people have I want to answer. And then stuff like this next question I wanted to answer on video, which is about ironing. So I mentioned for my whip parade that I um, ironed all my pieces to get them ready to show off on camera. And I had a lot of questions about how I iron because some people say, oh, I never get like the hoop marks out of mine or I can never get mine that flat. So I was going to tell you my process. I maybe should have shown you. It's fine. I can describe it. If it's unclear, I'll show it in the video at some point. But basically all I do is I just have a standard ironing board with a standard ironing board cover on it. And then I have my Rowinta iron. Um, it's like a $50. It's not, it's nothing like crazy good and it's nothing crazy cheap. It's just like a middle of the line iron, but it gets super hot. It has a cotton slash linen setting, which is like the hottest setting, super hot. And so what I do is I lay out a bath towel on my ironing board just to have a little bit of cushion. And I lay my cross stitch face down. And then I use a spray bottle to just very lightly mist the back of my cross stitch fabric. And then I use my super hot iron to press and just press like for a couple of seconds in each spot, like from the center out um, to get my piece nice and flat and crisp. And um, this one I did pretty quick. So you can see I didn't go all the way to the edges because you can still see the crease marks, but I did it through the center. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how I press my pieces to keep them, um, looking nice. Uh, I don't ever have hoop marks or Q-snap marks because I don't stitch in a hoop or Q-snap, but I do wad my fabric up in my hand and I do fold it to put it in the project bag. So I always have fold creases and kind of like wrinkles in the fabric just from grabbing at it. So I like to iron my stuff before I show it to you. Otherwise it'll, I don't know, it'll just have folds in it that are annoying. So I iron <laughs> and that's how I do it. Um, all the floss I stitch with says color fast, right? Like DMC, all the cotton over dyed say they're color fast. Um, the only time I've ever experienced any bleeding has been on red silk thread. So I try not to use water at all when I stitch with red silk. Um, but otherwise, I've never had any threads bleed. And even the red silk, it didn't really bleed that much. But like, I could tell a little bit of a haze on the fabric from it. And so I was like, nope, no water on red silk. Um, and I think it was an MPI silk. So I don't know if that's all silks um, or just NPI, but definitely if you're nervous about water, use it on a small spot. But I have never had any problems with water, uh, like just a light misting <laughs> um, with a spray bottle. Um, and I always have a water uh, spray bottle next to my iron because when I sew, um, when I quilt in peace, I um, spray my seams when I press them open with water. I don't use starch, I just use water. So that's why I have it and that's why I started using it and I feel like my pieces iron really flat. So that's what I do there. Any other questions? Oh, the only other thing I wanted to mention before I go is that these two charts, um, the ones I just redid the giveaway for, these were courtesy of Carla from Cobweb Corner, which is an excellent cross stitch site and she has all kinds of really good sales. And yesterday, I don't know if it's still happening today, like she kind of like does like kind of quick sales, but um, she had a Prairie Schooler sale and I'm working on this Christmas Eve. I have it out on the table um, right in front of me and um, all of Prairie Schooler was on 20% off yesterday. I don't know if it's still running today or there might be a different sale on today, but I would definitely go follow her on Instagram or um, sign up for like her alerts on her website because um, she's been running a lot of really good deals on charts. So if there's any like, if you are like me and have been watching 800 whip parades <laughs> over the last week um, and you have a list of charts you want to buy, go see if some of them are on sale. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Other than that, I have no new fun wedding updates. I need to keep working on that. 
and oh if you noticed in my last video <laughs> a couple people noticed and pointed it out I was wearing my wedding band um because I just got we had just gotten it uh from the jeweler and I didn't want to take it off <laughs> so <laughs> I had it on for a few days and I filmed a couple of videos with it on and uh forgot to take it off before and people were like what is that and I was like oh yeah it's wearing my wedding ring um I have it off now and in the box in the drawer but you know <laughs> I mean, I could probably just keep wearing it. It doesn't matter. But um, I took it off. I'll wear it after I'm married. <laughs> okay. I think that's all I've got to say for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm hoping I will have a finished parade sometime this next week for you. I'm hoping to get that filmed before I have to go back on work to work on Tuesday. And maybe a little quilt whip parade. Or maybe I'll save that for next weekend's floss tube something like that. So yeah, I will be seeing you sooner rather than later, I'm sure. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.